Well, a guy did go on the line and got some new wheels and tires for the Diesel International Scout back here. Of course, I went ahead and processed the old interweb card before I measured anything. And well, don't you know it, they just, they don't fit at all. I'm talking severe rubbage going on. So instead of exchanging them for the right size, you know, I did the right thing and snagged up a lift kit and shocks and bumper and some other stuff for it. Yeah, that ought to fix it. reminding you that it is not too late to get your last minute Christmas shopping done. Right now, head on over to vicegripgarage.com where we have 40 of your favorite items in stock and ready to ship. If you get those orders in by the end of this weekend, that should still be plenty of time to get them to you before Christmas Day. Also on the website is one of our newest design t-shirts featuring the International Scout. This shirt comes in three different colors, cream, baby blue, and hunter green. This happens to be one of Derek's favorite going to town shirts. Again, head on over to vicegripgarage.com. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you and hope you have a great weekend. Well, this was one of the first rigs we brought down from Minnesota. I'm kind of fond of the old rig, you know. So I guess it's been here since early August. Here we are in December already. Just can't believe it. In our fifth month, I guess, of it sitting here. So step four is, let's see if it'll fire up. That'll be nice if I could actually drive it up to the shop instead of tow it. It should, but probably not. But let's take a quick walk around this thing. She's getting some rust on her. and We did an improvement too before we brought her down. Look at this, fellas. Brand and new glass on the front side here, fellas. And the old gasket. Had my glass guy come out one last time and he popped a couple windshields in this and the 67 Ford, wherever that's sitting. But she's getting some new surface rust here. We buffaloed on it and I think we dug off some of that surface rust and we SOS'd it and did some other stuff. Gonna have to take care of this. I never quite finished dolling up the patina paint here. So we'll get to that too. Probably the last thing we're going to do is try to blend in what's now kind of halfway shiny paint in with this doll stuff here. And we'll put the shine juice down on her for that. But otherwise, it's basically exactly the same. These mirrors got to go eventually. This is another windshield I found on the Evil Bays, but it had some severe wiper scrapage on it which I don't got none right now. And then my glass guy said he actually found one, which any glass for this rig is unobtainium, except for the side glass, you could find them. And I guess this did break on a guy. I can't, it's not, it doesn't, it's not operating. That's what I'm saying. So maybe we'll try to take a look at that too. It'd be nice to get into the back of the rig again. And then maybe we'll, you know, on the bumper and I got a new bumper for the front which is laying over here on the poor vet there it is better see if we got a battery in this thing oh there we go they kind of get shared you know betwixt rigs around here oh yeah super starts wonder if I should check the oil checked well let's see if the old rig fires off for us watch the door dings there we go this rig likes the heavy, heavy GPs. Glow plugs, you know. So I'm gonna hold that button in until my forearm burns. Let's see. Fuel pump activated. I don't know, give her maybe a crack of throttle here. Yep. Oh, she wants to go. 
Let me, I'm falling out here. Give me a second. Okay. More GP. Was it even smoking? Were you watching or not? Okay. That's fine. All right. Almost. Not bad for four and three quarter, five and one sixteenth, however many months it's been. I'm gonna pull the fast idle on her. There we go. And then I don't have to hold the throttle down on her. Oh, it's actually completely my fault. It's not starting. I forgot something. It'll, it'll run this time. Bring the thunder. There we go. I mean, she ain't even smoking. What a good rig. Starting to smooth out a little bit. Had a tree fall down in a storm the other day. Well, she's done smoking. Must mean it's time to go. Oh, yeah, I gotta turn the key on so the brake indicator comes on. Oh, we still got fuel. We're good. All right. Get her up to the shop. Well, if the truth went on ahead and was told, guy just kept going and just scootered her all the way into town there, you know, picked up some parts and boy, rolling through the hills of Tennessee here, sharp reminder at how incredibly gutless these things are. I mean, severe lack of power. So, you know, putting huge tires, adding that rotating mashed potatoes on there, that'll really help, you know, with the power situation. But in all seriousness, if any of you fellers know how to hop up an SD33T or have any ideas for gearing on this thing, let me know because we're going to need it. I was already in second gear on several occasions just getting to town and putting these tires on. Well, we're going to be in granny four low and I ain't kidding ya. Well, the guy's been using rough country for many years and I've never had any issue with them so it just made sense to go back to them again. And in fact, if you've been around the channel for a while now, you've probably watched me put a rough country lift in on Beats, the old red service truck. That rig ended up looking really sharp. So what we got here is a four inch spring lift and the kit came with premium shocks, all the bushings and hardware. This box has all the U-bolts and bushings and everything in it. So plug and play kit basically. These did come painted black, but they looked like they got shipped. And by shipped, I mean drug down a highway with a chain. I have no idea what UPS did with these things, but that's okay. We just scuffed them up a little bit, and then I hit her with the old DE 1635 Duplicolor engine paint, which you guys have watched me use on basically anything chassis, frames, axles, steering, geometries, and all of that stuff, and that's this color here. And then, of course, we got the premium Rough Country shocks, which is great because these are just bagged out. I mean, every bump you hit, you just, you know, it does this for about five minutes. I would keep doing it, but my back is, well, it's about done for, let's be honest. So first thing we gotta do, let's just get the front end up, blow them tires off. We'll start up front, but, I'm gonna tease you on the tires and wheels. We'll throw these back on, set it on the ground, see what it looks like with these. I think they're 31s, approximately. And then we'll go ahead and pull out the big 33. I don't know what they are. Good Tread, Mud Extreme, Nighthawk, XLTs, something. So I don't know, it was the cheapest. It was the cheapest on eBay, that's what I'm saying. Step 19, I think the first thing I'm gonna do Let's go around and get some, let's get her on out of there juice and just and all the nuts and bolts and hardware. Everything's been on there for 40 plus years. It's gonna be, you know, ornery 
with the exception of the rear shocks, I think. Everything is original and hasn't come out, so here's hoping. You know, hindsight being 16, 12, not very smart of me to scoot this to town when it was raining out. It's just, you know, it was not advantageous. Everything's just dripping wet down here. That's, that's fine. A little more over here, I don't know. Original hardware in the rear springs. Like I was saying, it's got these coil over shock elators that do nothing. That's nice. Rear end's been in, see? We got the room temperature vulcanization cream in there. Original hardware over here, but I stand corrected up front. This is a new output tail shaft thing on the T case. Looks like a new speedometer cable that doesn't work. Up here, we've got a new U joint, but go ahead and leave this. You know, that's that's fine. We got a red shock on the right and blue on the left. Sure. So those have been replaced. Original hardware in the rear of the springs. One bolt has been replaced up here. That's probably the one that's going to come out today. The rest of them I'm going to strip or snap, most likely. Rough Country also does have a steering stabilizer. I should have picked that up too, but you know, being lazy and whatnot. First time really under the rig and it doesn't look that bad. The frame is absolutely perfect, but it's got some holes here and there on the floor, but I think that just holds the seat in, so that's okay. And then it's had fuel lines plumbed in, Derek style. These look like plastic lines, like a weed sprayer. That should be just fine. And then a close look at the straight pipe there, minus the dent, all the way up. Pretty nice. Well, guys, gonna try to do this the civilized way. You know, 1,400 foot LBs. But if that doesn't work, we're going straight into caveman mode, which is bend it and snap it, and fire, sawzall, whatever we gotta do, basically to get these off. Fingers crossed. Sounds weird. Okay, if that's, this is, that's how you wanna go. Nine years later, still fighting the shock later on this side. Went over to the other side, zing zang, came right off. So I'm gonna take the front tires off now, mazel. We're gonna have to do that anyway. That way a guy can get his mitts in there and kind of see what's going on. It's probably time to get the old liquid wrench out. Not quite sure, but we're quickly approaching it. Got out Big Chief, got the stem off of it at least, but now, you know, it's spinning and twisting and got to take care of that. Yep. Oh, whoa, bouncy little doll. Yeah, normally a feller can just put a socket on there and bend her back and forth until she snaps off at the nut, but I can only bend her one way and there isn't room up there, you know, to do that. So that turned into a mess, but best tool in the world came to the rescue. I was able just to clamp -late that on and twist and shimmy. So 17 hours later, I guess let's go ahead and Take the springs off. Now here's how I got this rigged up. Now you guys obviously could do this in your driveway or garage. You've seen me do it. Jacks and some blocks, but you know, might as well use this. So it's a little bit different in this step if you're doing it on the ground because you would support the axle kind of similar to this. Get the springs out of the way, put your springs in, bring that back up to the axle or let your axle down into the spring. What we're gonna have to do is drop the springs, put the new ones in, which would be lower and then we'll lift the whole rig up until those make contact because this isn't going to move over here. But tomato, tomato, she's going to get done, you know. So now we'll drop the U-bolts off both sides and then we'll take probably the front spring bolt out first, let it hang down, pop the rear off, pull one spring off at a time. Well, can't be. Oh, yep, it is. Guy's got this little situation going on right here. Just been bottomed out pretty hard. Folded it into the nut and I can't get the socket in there. One could try to heat it and bring her back around, but 
I don't think that that's really going to work. So I think I'm just going to take the death wheel and zzzz right here. All these do is protect the nut basically in case this happens. But I'll have more time just dinking around trying to get this out. And if I go crazy, maybe I could weld in a little piece there. Nope, probably not. This one seems just fine over here, so that's good. You know, it's too bad about Vern Gosling. Shoot. Something worth mentioning here, fellas. Be really careful with your brake lines if you're dangling or lifting the old tire stick here. You don't want to stretch them out, especially when they're this rotten. They're about to blow, so we're going to pretend, you know, we didn't see that. Why is that a different size? Oh, that is a lug nut turned around backwards and cross-threaded. <laughs> That's approved. <laughs> Safety squints. Look how dainty these U-bolts are. Just mind-blowing when you compare them to like a Chevy Blazer or something like that. Okay, now bring this down and we should get lift off. Look out, Chuck. Get out of the way. Easy, faster but easier. Slow it down. Okay, yep. There's that lift off. Should be nice and clear here. Everything stays with the axle, the old pipe laters and the steering rods and all that stuff. Now we can tackle these guys. What flavor are you? That's way too big. I'm back. Is this the right flavor? It is. How about over here though? Same thing. All right. Bolt remover 400 on here. Yep. There we go, springs out on both sides. Pretty smooth, easy process. Now we just gotta hang and lay the new ones. Like I say, they'll probably be down here somewhere. And then we can just push up on this to adjust the rotation. Nice and easy, line them up with the springs, bring the air jack later up, and they'll make contact and we can just throw the new U-bolts in, toss the shocks in, and we'll be done up here. Kit, of course, comes with new spring bushings here. We're gonna whack these in before we hang the springs. Reminder to put some sort of grease or something in here. That way they don't get squeaking on a guy. Because squeaks, they tend to drive me a little batty. What is that squeaking noise? I'm about bad at it. Stop it! Stop! I'm just gonna use this spray on white lithium grease. Just get her in there. You know, get it, get it on, slide these in, and just don't use like a lubricant that's going to dry up on you. And you'll end up with a squeak anyhow. Now these springs can get real heavy, so if you got a friend that you can trick into coming over, go on ahead and do that. That'll help you out a little bit. Guys, got to take this paint marker here, and I'm going to draw a line on this nut. And right down this bolt in a fashion where if a guy, you know, scoots under the rig here, I can hook my peeper on it, make sure the hardware hasn't moved any. Should check on this stuff, you know, after a couple hundred miles, make sure she's not going anywhere. So we're getting our lift by making this arch bigger, which means on this end, we're not quite there yet. So what I'm gonna do is just put this bolt in here, see? I'm gonna get a ratchet strap. Hook on here, hook on somewhere down there. And try to bring this into spec. And then once we get one of them hung, this has a crossbar on here. So it's gonna hold that in place to where we can get the other side on as well. See if this actually works up here, this ratchet strap. getting there. Nope. Hmm. I wonder if I can just give it a little tickle. Will that help? Oh yeah, I think the tickle did it. Well, I'll be dipped. Whole different 
pity party going on this side. Spring was not wanting to cooperate. The islet was way over here. And we know that we can't bring this more forward because this side's already bolted in. So that wasn't going to work. What needed to happen basically was the spring needed to get flatter so that the eyelets get longer or wider apart, if that makes sense. The flatter this gets, the longer the spring gets. And instead of putting jacks or anything under here, what a guy did was jam this Tanya Harding handle in here on the rubber side. It's still greased up here. So this would slide, wrap the ratchet strap up through here, straight to the frame. So when I tightened this, it slid on this and forced it to get flat. And I basically ended up walking it right into position with the uh, ratchet strap here. Should be able to just give that one smack and drive that through and then both springs are in, we can move on to the shocks. But you can see how much of a lift that's gonna end up being. It's advertised as four inches. Boy, that might be a whole lot more than that. Got in such a hurry, I almost forgot to put the center of Google Maheimers up in here, so I pulled this back down real quick. And now that I got a process, should be real easy to get her back up again. Raise this back up, pulled the spring into the axle here, got this one lined up and pretty tight, but I'm gonna wait until I can get pressure on the axle so this seam here flattens out just a hair. We'll do a final torx on these and probably even snip those off a little bit, otherwise they'll just be dragging on rocks, you know. In this particular scout kit, there's two U-bolts that are quite a bit heftier than the original ones, like this would be like the original size. That goes on the drinker side, and it fits through this plate okay, but it's not gonna fit through these brackets. I need just a skosh of clearance, and that's the rear of the shock, and then this is that front one that we just gave a tickle to come off over here. So I'm going to put these in the drill press and ruin a step bit. And just open these up a touch so they can slide over these U-bolts here. That seemed to work just fine. They just needed a, you know, tickle. Now that the bendy bolts are in, we're going to bring them up to, I don't know, what's this turn on at? A hundred? Sure. We'll bring them up to that. All the weight is now sitting on the axle. So you wanna make sure you do that before you tighten these up. So they seat properly, you know, or I don't know, there's science or something involved in that, I think. This one was loosey goosey. Come on, there it is. Well, the guy's old hardware for the shock later here. Nope, too big. That's right, it was all worn out and the threads were cross-threaded. I have a Dorman kit, it's just a cheap little box. It's got some pretty decent hardware. It saved me in a few pinches. I'm just gonna throw some new bolts, nuts, and washers and all that in here. And again, I got this thing greasier than a Culver's cheeseburger. Guy likes to keep these tied up so they're shrunk down and I can get my washer and bushing on here. And then you could try to cut these and aim them like that. And then you can just come back in and top her off and you're ready to go. Had to get in here and rebuild this here. Because I had a bunch of bare metal showing on it. I don't want this to rust, you know. Here's the back, stock height, of course. Here's the front. The springs in quite a bit of difference. I should have measured between the tire and the wheel well. Dang it, I guess we can do that in the rear. But I think we're going to be okay. I ran the tape measure through here. These measure about 31. We're going to be putting 33s in. So, of course, there's a concern here and here. But I did some math magicianals, cut that in half, and twirled the tape measure over on the hub here, and I think we're gonna be okay. So keep in mind, this is gonna get a little bit bigger yet, and wider, and more aggressive, and I don't think better looking. I really like these wheels, but I got something different. I think really different. That's gonna really make this blue just, you know, it's gonna pop right at you. I'm gonna clean up some of these tools, run the broom through here real quick, reset, if you will. And we'll jump into the back here. 
guy went ahead and popped out the shock lighters here and tell you what, feller, this is putting quite a bit of lift into the rear of this rig. Now she's kind of sagging like them rap artist's pants, you know. I'm gonna measure this here just kind of loosely so we have an idea. Is it four inches of lift, more, less? Just out of curiosity. I'm gonna go from this lip to the edge of the wheel here. It's about nine and three quarter, give or take nine inches here or there. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop off the nuts on the U-bolts. This should go pretty darn fast here. Axle's gonna stay where it is in the lift. Drop the spring out, new springs in. Lift the vehicle right into the axle again, basically just like up front. Whatever giant rock the fella ran over up front must have drugged down back here too, because I got the same exact issue going on. So I could probably just cut the U-bolt maybe and get it out of here, or I could cut it here. Haven't decided. I'm gonna do whatever's the easiest, because I'm lazy, you know. I was able to sneak this one out, but same issue over here as well. Getting there, I just got it supported right now lightly so when these plop off then we'll just let the axle float you know brake lines will hold her in place then i can try to strip these off you know have to torch those out probably hip yes get on out of there <sighs> why is this side missing a block but this side has one in well what in the devil one dose, trace quattro. Help me understand this. Why, why just on the one side? Was the spring changed? Was she sagulating? If you guys hear what sounds like 14 Cessnas buzzing the building here, it's actually my boys riding their dirt bikes and, well, they like to feed them the onions. Let's just say that. This one's ready to come out. Yeah, yeah. Captain side. Yeah, yeah. Got the rears all bush laid it up. I think they're ready to go in. Now these spring perches here, they're, they got a little, there's a slant, there's an angle to them. That's what I'm saying. When the rig goes up, spring goes down. What's happening is your pinion and your drive shaft, you're increasing that pinion angle. Too much of that, uh-oh, there goes U-joints, and you get the vibratos and stuff like that in there as well. This helps correct that a little bit. So when we put these in, basically they're in where this is gonna be the rear, this is the front. We want that pinion and that axle to kind of tilt up towards the transfer case, and that's gonna reduce that pinion angle just a skosh, pretty nice that rough country, just builds that into these bad boys. These are significantly more heavy duty than those dainty little things we just pulled out. Front of the springs in there, trickiest part for me is getting my flanges up in there and getting that nut started. You can uh, put some RTV on your wrench, stick your nut in that, and that'll keep her kind of tacky in there so you can get that bolt through. Doing the same trick here with the old ratchet strap. Got to bring this shackle unit here more forwarder. So when I relax that, hopefully it gets close and uh, lube these up just a hair so it slips in there better. And we'll have one side done here. And then we've got to lift it up to there. And this is that block I was talking about. So you can see how it's flat now. We're gonna be tipping this just, you know, a little bit up like that. Try to keep this pinion angulation correct. I don't know, there's geometry and stuff like that. Gotta get this to seat thin here. Seat, that's seated. And then, the guy's gotta get that nut in here somehow. Where did it go? Hello, not. Where did you go? No, did I get it first try? I just can't believe it. Yep. Uh, yeah. Bring that into there. Hook that in there. And then I hook it up here. And let's bring it back. 
Let's get her back some more. Let's bring it all the way back. And then we want to tickle the spreadage in there so the new bushings go on a little bit easier. Tickle, tickle. That one's in. A little bit more lift. And that one's in. Pop the U-bolts on, springs are done. I had to do the same with this plate, just threw up in the bench vise and zing, zang, you know, snip them off a little bit. Guy probably could have, you know, heated them up and bent these around, but, you know, don't get it right. Just get it done. Lift, complete. Ooh, you can tell this has oil on it because it's leaking some. Had the diff cover in my eardrums this whole time, you know. Got to looking at it, it still has the original tags, even though someone's been in here. And it has the 354 tag on it, so that's good and bad. Uh, Scout 2s, they came with 272, 307, 331, 354, 373, and a 409, which is really rare. But if this has the 354, that means gearing it might not really be an option. That's about the optimal gear right now. Going to a 373 isn't going to do a ton. And if you remember the trip home in this thing, she was wrapped up just to go 55, 60. So I think we're going to have to maybe look at pepping up the old Nissan more than anything, because with these bigger tires on here, I just, it's not really, you know, a highway machine. Could it get to town? Maybe. Just maybe. Yep, that's approved. Looks way better, even with these Wrangler tires on there. I'm gonna save them, by the way. They'll end up on something. They've only got, what, 800 miles on them? No, less than that. Anyway, last time I measured, what did I say I had? All of it, or what was it? Nine and three quarter, yeah, to the lip of the wheel, right? Now we have, wow, 15 and a quarter. 15 and a quarter minus nine and three quarter. Beep, pop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. Five and a half? No, yeah, 5.5, .5, I think. I don't know, bleep, bloop it in the comments. That's, yeah, you're getting your money's worth out of this lift and it's actually sitting really level, which is nice. Well, fellers, went to pop on a tire and wheel, you know, and we got some fitment issues. Not so much here, here, but right about here. It's a 17 inch wheel from a 15 and it has different back spacing. And sure enough, we can actually see where it's hitting. Ran in the house and ordered some wheel spacers, which actually, I don't mind that because it's gonna bring the wheels out a little bit and fill kind of this area. That looks kind of weird with it tucked in. So I think that's gonna look a lot better with that spacer in there. But for now, I guess we can go up here and address the, where did my cattle go, Thumper? This needs some updating and I think I got the thing for it. From the looks of it, just got this big bolt here on both sides. Just knock them out quick and I think the whole thing's gonna come off. Got some wiring to unhook on the lights that don't work and then had these these are actually kind of handy but they're not hooked to anything i just pulled them out hanging off right now gonna move it to more of a modern slender bumper kind of an off-road bumper yeah i was afraid of that top always spins yeah okay If I get one side off, thing is, I just, I don't know how much this weighs. Crying in the mud. I just, Pete's sake, somebody help me understand this one. Oh, it's got heft. Wow, this has got to be, what, 250 pounds probably? 
Guy's gonna go ahead and take this grill cover off too. It don't get cold enough here in the south to have to run this. True story, 77 degrees yesterday. And back in Minnesota, I already had three inches of snow on the ground with winter advisory. We get a whole lot more done down here in the south. Especially when you're rolling around in the weeds, trying to get old rigs running, you know. This will also make the front end, look at this, it's gonna look so much better. They got such a simple, nice grill on these. Kind of a shame to hide them up. After I get this off, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the frame up down here a little bit and then we'll rebuild it. You know, and then we'll figure out if this new bumper is even gonna fit. Not sure, got it on Evil Bay, cheapest one I could find. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Guy's been sitting here looking at this snout for, I don't know, six minutes. I just don't think I can leave it be looking like this. One of those reasons is the bumper I got is raw steel. So we're gonna have to paint that too. And it might look kind of goofy having a nice painted bumper and then kind of this. So I'm thinking maybe we should bring this around with it. So at least they match. That's weird. Look more gooder. Ah, there we go. I think I'm just gonna jam a cheek poker across this. That'll knock off the surface rust and then we can kind of paint everything at once, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dupli color, 1635. Sticks to everything, prepped or non-prepped. Oh yeah. Did you know I was a spray painting world champion in 1999 and 2000 consecutively? Nope but I bet you I could be. And then I just blended her right down into this, see? Come right into the springs we already painted. And now this whole front end is just brand new. Didn't even tape off in here, you know, we'll just spritz it. Spritz it around, bring it around this way. I guess we don't want it to look perfect, then it wouldn't match the rest of the truck, but. Craigslist, professional paint job, fresh. Lost the receipt though. Darn it. Well, here's the bumper I grabbed, fellers and fellettes. And there's a very specific reason. Well, it was the cheapest on Evil Bay, basically. I also like the looks of it. You know, it's just a little bit more sleek than that big behemoth cattle smasher we took off of there. And it's about 178.36 pounds lighter, or 719 waffles for you Canadians. I don't remember it having these hooks on there. That's pretty nice because we could just <whistles> when we're done. I was prepared to weld some stuff on here. Got to clean all this flash rust off of here and then we're going to paint this one up too. A little bit different process on this guy here since she's bare metal. I'm using some of this uh, Duplicolor grease and wax remover. And I just keep running this on until my rag, you know, doesn't look like that basically. And then once she's nice and clean, I'm gonna come back over and hit it with this self-etching primer. It's a primer that self-etches, you know. It's made for bare metal and then color, you're never gonna guess this, but DE 1635, semi-gloss black, you know. It'll look sharp. Yeah, this process here will make sure this paint sticks longer than a felony, you know. Plan on mowing down some brush and trees and stuff with this, so definitely don't want her flaking off in the front. Just gonna mist on a very light first coat here. Let her dig in a little bit. And then I'll come back around and, you know, really. I didn't want the bumper rusting from the inside out, so I went ahead and sprayed some of this undercoat in there. And that'll do the job. Wait a couple minutes for that to dry. We'll throw it on. Yeah, this looks about 9,416% better. 
compared to that big old thing down there. These hooks, yeah, they're pretty dainty, but you know what? We've only got two grade eight bolts holding that bumper on anyway, so there's really no point in putting bigger rings in. Just gonna rip everything off anyway. But yeah, it looks a lot better. Got the Scout down on its own paws, you know. It's actually the following day. Cleaned up a little bit, got her off the lift, scooted over here. Today we're gonna clean it up a little bit, put some different mirrors on it while we're waiting for these space elators to show up. Should be here this afternoon, hopefully. But a lot of this white stuff you're seeing on here isn't actually part of the patina. A lot of this is more of a brown, bronze, tan rust. Standard issue, US only, color. And this stuff here is a lot of the rubbing compounds and stuff like that I used to polish the paint. I don't remember what came up right after I polished it last time, but I didn't get to wash in it and it sat on there. Now normally if you can get to it in a day or two, soapy water, Dawn, whatever flavor you want, you know, take that right off and then you're ready to go. But this has been sitting for months, baked in the sun, you name it. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take some quad steel wool, the soapy kind, run this outside, give it a quick bath, and just rub a lot of this stuff off, get it cleaned up into the base here. Take those mirrors off real quick, and you guessed it. We're gonna come back and put the shine juice on it. And we're just gonna blend that in to where we got kind of a shiny paint, so it's not gonna be the whole rig, just the roof, and then right here, for example. We'll just kind of feather it down into this, so it kind of makes the rig Looks shiny as a whole, but I don't want to run it over the rest of this paint. It just gets too greasy when you have an actual finish on there. And then while I'm doing that, I got to decide if we're going to on the rear bumper back here to match the front bumper. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Got this side of the hood done. You can see all this white. That's what we're after there. Actually, this side of the rig is done completely. Just trying to be a little bit careful that steel wool will take stuff off like this. And remember, we went around that with the landline whirler. We wanted to keep all the stuff like that. But this will clean that up, get that white residue off again. And this is a something you can do instead of doing like a comet wash or something like that. If you want, you can just run these down a rig. And then like this grill, if you wanted to add a little bit of the patina back, just take this rub on your edges or corners and you could bring out some of that color underneath whatever flavor you got what are you doing new shop cat he's keeping the mice down a little bit these work great on chrome glass rubber trim oxidized paint even does stuff like this see all these little rust bubbles well a guy can just start deleting on them see just make sure it's not like actual real good paint because this does leave very fine scratches but on lacquer paint or single stage paint you're not really going to see that you know but works pretty good for a rust delete whipped up some of my shine juice here if you want to see how this stuff is made there's a link down there in the description and you can actually watch my wife mix some up and throw it on our pickup called lawsuit but Here's what that looks like. Just kind of started edging this out. I'm going to start with the roof and work my way down. But to give an example, I did it right here. So I just want to blend it in with where the paint is naturally shiny there. See? So we're not doing the whole panel. We're just kind of bringing it right down in there just so it comes back around for us. And of course, there's before and after, but it's going to look nice. I think the wheels that I chose are going to go really good with all these colors on here. Got those old mirrors off. Once we get the juice on, we'll come back and snag those on. Less than five minutes later, I'm done, and this thing looks absolutely amazing. Just a reminder, fellers, flammability, flammability. 
Okay, make sure you dispose of the rag properly. And if you have anything left, because it'll smolder and where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta show you this thing. It's mind bottling. Just look at this thing. Are you looking at it? Oh my goodness. I think this looks just absolutely amazing. Lots of bronze, black. Looks sharp. And then just a reminder in the really heavy rust colored areas, see how this is starting to soak in faster in some areas than other? Might have to come back, put another coat on to even it out a little bit. And then you'll have to apply this, I don't know, depending on where you live, every couple months, six months, two months, I don't know. Depends on how much weather it's gonna see and stuff, but accomplish the goal. See how that blends right in? to the shined up paint and that new front end looking good. Good news, wheel spacer showed up. Also good news, I made a mistake. <laughs> Weird, right? Based on the price of these little devils, I thought quantity of one meant, you know, a kit as in four. Nope, just got dose. So, I'm gonna throw these on the front so at least the wheel is clear and then we're just gonna, you know, pretend that the back is also more outer. I got them on the way, but it'll be a couple of days yet. My choice is probably gonna be just a tickle controversial, but that's just the way she goes. I like to take some risks when it comes to wheels because let's face it, wheels make or break a vehicle and that's the way it's been since the beginning of time. I really like and respect the turbine wheels on this rig a lot, but they're really beat up and discolored and they need a lot of work. I wanted to go with a bigger tire. We got 33s sitting over here and I also wanted to go with a little bit bigger wheel, ended up with 17s, but I wanted to keep that turbine style, but I wanted to change the color to try to bring this patina out. So I ended up with these guys right here. Just let it soak in for a little bit. I know some of you, some of you just went oof -da. The rest of you went, yeah, yep. They're kind of a metallic, bronzish, slightly silver, and then with the fake beadlock, you know. Basically searched Evil Bay and sorted by cheapest price, and then dealt that down to the style I wanted. And these are literally called good trips. And they're not shy about ripping off Goodyear at all. And these are 33 12.5 17s. Got a real aggressive tread on them. So let's roll the rig forward. We'll pop these on, see what this thing looks like. I'm thinking this is really going to make the paint look fancy. I'm going to shoot you a tip I've learned over the years working with spacers when you need them to clear steering and stuff like that. When they get deep like this, it's awfully hard to start your nut down in there. Take your socket, jam one nut in, stick another nut in, start the one, add another, start the next, add another. And by the time you're done, you've only got to try to get one started back in there, you know. Makes it a little easier. All right, let's see if we can get this guy on. Clears, we're in business. I mean, it's slicker than goose poop on a pump handle, and I ain't kidding you. This thing turned out definitely a go on the town rig, but I kind of want to put her to use. And what I mean by that is, 
you hear from farmers and ranchers for 40 years. These are the toughest rigs on the planet. They're built like tanks. And I did this and that with it. Problem is, feller searched up on the interwebs and there's a lack of evidence. So help me out. If you know somewhere to take this thing wheeling in central Tennessee, I think we ought to go see what this thing can actually do. And I'm not talking break it and bust it up and add more dents. Just sensible wheeling. Can a guy take it hunting and fishing and whatnot? It turned out absolutely amazing. And the best part of it is I really don't have a lot of money in this at all. Cheapest tires and wheels you could possibly find. The rough country lifts are extremely affordable. More than anything, it's sweat equity. Buffing and cleaning and shine juice. Just a little bit of and you can see what a tremendous difference it can actually make. Might keep going. Maybe we do a little rust repair, bring the interior back around. I do know one thing, Jessica is very, very fond of this rig. And the worst part is I can't even hide a key. She's already, she's already driving it everywhere. So, which that's fine, I guess. They're meant to be driven. Now I know you guys can do this. You absolutely can got a rig just like this maybe even a rig that's a better candidate so get outside get off your hind end and go save something thanks guys for watching appreciate it very much we'll see you next time